Thank you, honey. All right. And so I, I have some confessions to make. Friday was really tough on me. Uh, uh, physically, I, uh, I really wanted to eat. And so what I ended up doing was going home early. I was up here at work, and some things just, it just seemed like I couldn't get my focus. I couldn't, and so I just said, I've got to go home. I've got to get, and so I went and picked up my kids on the way home and uh, kind of gathered myself in the midst of just spending time with my kids. And then I was just like re-energized. And, and, um, and so Friday night, what I did for my kids is I did something that I love to do myself, is I, is I cook pancakes for my kids. And so, so I, fed them, uh, I fed them Friday night pancakes. And then uh, Saturday morning, I got up and I made them pancakes again. And, so, and I have to tell you, it's so amazing that I wasn't even tempted one bit. And I know that has to be from the Lord. I mean, I know it has to be from the Lord because I love to eat. And, and so, and it, not, do, not only do I love to eat, I mean, I eat a lot. So uh, it, uh, I live to eat in a lot of ways. But, but more importantly than eating for the tangible, I love the spiritual. And I love the insight that God offers us in his word and through his presence, through spending time with the Holy Spirit. And I really believe that, that uh, as we seek God, whether we were fasting from our phone or Facebook or food or whatever your fast was, whatever you decided to do to spend time with God and just kind of do something different, I really believe that God was there with you. Amen? And that he showed up. And you may, not, you may not even know really the things that he spoke to you until later on, the things that he showed you. But I know he was there with you and he was, he was showing you something. Amen? And so, you know, today I want to read, I want to start with two verses, and then I want to share an idea, and then, uh, and then uh, we're, the message, I believe, is going to be short, okay? I'm, re- I'm reminding myself it's going to be short. I believe it's going to be short. And so I want to start with these two verses today. Proverbs 13, 7, it says, One man pretends to be rich, yet has nothing. Another pretends to be poor, yet has great wealth. And then Romans 1, 25, they exchanged the truth of God for a lie and they worshiped and they served created things rather than the creator who is forever praised. And I I want us to gain this sense of idea because our world, our society, especially this country is selling us on a lot of ideas that I don't know, well, I know that they're not from God, okay? And, And the idea is that money and things promise what? What does our world say? What does our country say? Happiness, comfort, security, okay? And at the end of the day, basically at the end of the message, we're going to sum it up. The end of the message sums up is that if we don't have anything, if we don't have any money, if we don't have a home, if we don't have any tangible thing, if we're just this, at the end of the day, if we just have God, it's everything, okay? And I really believe that so, but that so many things are trying to sell us on the idea that happiness and security and all these things come from the idea of money or idea of dollars or all this. And, it, and it's, it kind of gets us in this spiritual sense of being misguided and directed and we don't even realize it, okay? Area of our life, amen? Can I get an amen? amen? God is at work. These $100 bills can do life-changing ministry. They can feed the hungry. They can help people. They could, they could begin a start in someone's life, uh, maybe an orphanage or, or maybe uh, 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 a hospital or, or some kind of... This could transform someone's life. But it would have to be God's, God our Father. But the same $500, if it's mammon, if it belongs to the spirit of mammon, it could do evil. It could destroy a family, it could destroy a marriage, it could destroy someone. And this is the idea that I need you to see today, is whether we realize it or whether we don't realize it, is there is a spirit involved in the things that we have. And they're either God's or they're not. It's not if and, there's no other area, it's either God's or not. And what I want to challenge you today in this idea is if it's God's, if this is God's anointed dollars, if this is God's money, then where should I spend it? 
where he tells me, where my, where God, if this is God's and he's, everything I have is God's, where he tells me is where I should go with it. Now, with that said, I want us to kind of drop this mask and then we'll, we'll kind of continue with the point on this and we'll be done. If money promises happiness, significance, and security, and we know that that is a promise not from God, happiness, security, and significance does not come from this. It only comes from here. Amen? Amen. But we have to have this to operate in our day. We just have to. We're, we're gonna, we're, we got to go to work. we got to pay bills. we got to have jobs. And so I want, us to draw, I want us to expose something here real quick. If we trust money for happiness because I think we trust money for happiness because we don't recognize what we have in Christ. We don't recognize that at the end of the day, whether we've eaten that day or whether we made any money that day, at the end of the day, if we have Christ, that's enough. We don't recognize our significance or who we have or who we are in Christ. And we trust money to make us significant because we don't know who we are in Christ. My identity, what God has purposed me for, what God has given me identity to to be. And my third point is this. We believe money will make us secure because we trust in money and not in Christ. We believe money will make us secure and fit what God is wanting to do. Let me ask you a question. What is it that we depend on for money to do for us today? Shelter? Food? Necessities? Clothes? What else? You know, bills, pay bills. What is it that we need money to take care of for us today? I believe in some ways, in a sense, that we're setting ourselves up with the idea and, and, and we've lost the idea that everything, that God is sufficient. God has made it every day for us to need to depend on Him. Amen? Every day there's going to be something in your day. God has really shown me this this week. Every day... When I woke up in the morning, I said, I'm not going to eat, Lord. You know, I need you in this day. And, and God showed me, you know, how to depend on him through the day. And it didn't mean that challenges wasn't coming in my day. It just means that I had to depend on him in a day. Every day I have to depend on God. But I'm going to tell you, somewhere along my journey, the idea, I, I got twisted because all of a sudden I started depending on this to make a difference in my life. These. Okay. Where did the change, what happened? Where did that change happen? For me. Okay. Just the demands of society. Okay. And so there are things, as the demands come and society says, this has got to happen and you've got to pay your bills and if you're going to find security in who you are and whose you are, then we need these to be what okay so here's the thing if I want this to be God's money or man or manna what do I need to do with it aha uh-huh. Miss Elizabeth she's exactly right I'm gonna here, here's the thing that I need you to see today I'm giving that right here to the church to the offering Now, why do I need you to see that? It is an example. Because the only way for us to take our riches, to take our blessings, to take everything that God has blessed us, anointed us, has given us with, the only way for it to be God's and God used and God directed is to do what? To give it to God. And and God gives me 100%. Everything I have comes from God. And I give Him... 10% and I get to live on 90%. Everything that I have from my Father is 
blessed, is directed, is anointed, is purposed for his kingdom because I have taken what he has given me and I have given a offering and a tithe because 10% is the tithe, but I'm going to give an offering too, which will be whatever percent you want it to be, unto the kingdom of God and put in that offering plate. And here's the thing that I need to say, that by doing that, it keeps the spirit of manna off your money. Now, I know that there are going to be people sitting right here, and they're not, they're not going to understand this. I know because I was one of those. But I'm here to tell you, unless this 10% happens, everything God has given you, and you've given it back to the kingdom of God, unless that happens, it will carry this spirit right here on it. It will fall through your fingers. It will leave you, and you won't even know why. It's gone. And here's the thing, I don't know what anybody in here gives, and I really don't care. I'm being honest with you, I really don't care what you give, but God does. I'm just telling you, I really don't care, but God does. And the reason I can stand up here and tell you that this right here, this 10% is a tithe. And you can go and people say New Testament and all this Old Testament. I'm telling you, you just do it and see what happens. You unleash it. You unleash the riches, the, the, the things the, that God has put in your life. You trust God and, and you see what happens. And I'm going to tell you what's going to happen is the gates of hell are going to come out and they're going to meet you. Because they're going to encounter you. Because they're going to want to resist. They want to lie to you. They want to tell you that you better stop doing that. You can't pay your water bill. You can't pay your light bill. But I'm going to tell you right now, whenever that rises up in you, you've got to say, you know what, Jehovah God, my God in heaven is my protector. He is my provider. When the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, he does it so deceptive. that we don't even recognize it. He doesn't have to break into our houses and take from us. All he has to do is get us an idea that, you know what, we won't make it unless we hang on to it. You see, Jesus was a giver. He gave his life for you and me. He laid down his life on Calvary for our lives. And so I want, I've got this challenge for you, and I want you all to bear with me. I'm, I'm going to be done in just a minute, but I want to read this. Because for most of my life, I grew up very poor. I was, I was poverty. And so I kept a poverty mindset. And I didn't even recognize it. Someone, if someone would have came and said, you know what, you got a poverty mindset, I would say, no, you know, I've got a nice house. I've got a new vehicle. I got, you know, I've got stuff. But I want you all to listen. To when someone says, what a nice house you have, if pride is there, you're going to say, well, we were going to build a bigger one. <laughs> but if poverty, if you have a poverty mindset, you would say, well, it was a foreclosure. I got a good deal. <laughs> but someone that is grateful and centered their life on God says, thank you. The Lord has blessed me. And when someone says, that's a nice suit, you, you, pride would say, it's tailor-made. Poverty would say, I got it half price. Buy one, get one half, or buy one, get one free. And gratitude would say, thank you. And when someone says, that's a nice car, pride would say, I've got three of them. <laughs> Poverty would say, it's a company car. And gratitude would say, well, thank you. You see, pride wants people to think we're paid more poverty wants people to think we're paid less gratitude doesn't care what people think it only cares what God thinks it only cares what God thinks that's that's worthy of a hand clap that's worthy of a hand clap and so you know what my thing is the worship team comes up my thing this morning is this I don't know anybody, and I have never said that I was going to worship manna, riches, or stuff. But as I look back in my life, as I look back in my life and centered, you know, the things I was striving for and, and looking to God to, 
I realized that a lot of times in my life there was a sense of me following this wrong spirit. And see, Jesus comes in, he deals with the spiritual. Because the truth is, when he says, you can't worship God or money, the truth is, I mean, that doesn't even really make sense. Because money can't tell us anything to do. But the spirit of money, the spirit of I need more, the spirit of I'm not grateful, the spirit of someone needs to take care of me, the spirit of I better hold on to this, I don't have enough to make it. That spirit is not from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I believe that the Spirit of God is wanting to bless everything that His church does, that's wanting to further the kingdom, wanting to make a difference in lives and souls today. Amen? And so, you know, my $500 message that would, that would ultimately be worth a billion dollars to you is this. <laughs> is at the end of the day, you've counted on money way too much. At the end of the day, you haven't counted on God near enough. And why that's going to be worth a billion dollars to you is because eternity is a long time. And I believe eternity is worth way more than we sell our souls for every day. By taking our money and not using it and leveraging it for those lives that are lost and those lives that are hurting. You see, I'm not asking nothing from you today. I'm asking you to look at your relationship with our Father in heaven and see that it is centered on Him and see that His purpose towards His mission and His life. We can say that we've given Him our life. We can say that we've surrendered our hearts and our minds to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. But ultimately, does your life really look that way? And so I'll finish with this thought. I read it this two weeks ago and it said this. If you were to be put on trial at court to be convicted for being a Christian? Would there be enough evidence that you would be found guilty? Would there be enough evidence of you praying with people? Would there be enough evidence of you giving what you have? Would there be enough evidence of you going and trusting our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, into your life? Would there be that evidence where you would be convicted and found guilty? of being a follower, a disciple of Jesus Christ. And I know many of you this morning are saying, yes, I believe I would. And as we stand and close, let's stand. Those that are here this morning that believe they wouldn't be convicted, I'm going to invite you to come to these altars. And when you come to the altar...